From the Mediterranean to the Indian Ocean, close to 35,000 rudimentary structures or monuments have been found scattered in every corner of the globe. Researchers actually believe there might be a lot more. These megaliths appear straightforward in design, but present a question along with them. How'd ancient civilizations stack such colossal stones on top of each other, sturdy enough for them to withstand the test of time? Join us as we uncover the greatest megaliths and colossal ancient sites hidden in plain sight. Number 20. Masuda no Iwafune Nestled in the Takiachi district of the Nara prefecture of Japan is a small village that holds immense importance. Asuka has been designated as a historical site by the Japanese government, and civil engineers have been warned against carrying out any sort of construction in the region. Asuka has long been recognized as one of the world's most well-preserved relics of ancient civilizations. A fact based on the presence of the Asuka palaces, Buddhist temples, and of course, the Masuda no Iwafun. Some believe the graphite structure holds religious importance and make a point to pay homage to the megalith situated in the hills of southern Kashihara city. Others would have you believe that the structure is a compelling piece of evidence that aliens have actually tried to establish contact with humans in the past. In any case, everyone can agree on one thing. The Masuda no Iwafune holds a perplexing mystery that no one has been able to solve to this day. The graphite structure measures 11 meters in length, 8 meters in width, and almost 5 meters in height, plus an astonishing 1,000 tons in weight. The structure appears as a slanted landmark in the hills with deep square-like burrows in the center, as well as troughs along the side of it. The Masuda no Iwafun is also surprisingly smooth. The troughs at the sides seemingly indicate that the structure had been painstakingly smoothened over a period of years, if not decades. What's of particular interest to researchers in this case, however, is that even with most modern tools, the level of precision used to cut through the graphite stone could not be achieved. So, how did people with no tools besides probably sharpened pieces of stone and gravel manage to cut out intricate troughs and burrows inside of a massive graphite structure? The alien theory is starting to make sense. Number 19. Seiwite. Peru is often considered an archaeological haven for its many relics from ancient civilizations, predominantly the Inca tribes. The Incas hold a special place in the hearts of historians and authors for the simple fact that they were advancing at a rate well ahead of their time. The mysterious disappearance of the tribe with no signs of war, disease, or any other reason makes them all the more intriguing. The Inca tribe left behind a number of archaeological wonders for the 21st century history buff, engineering enthusiast, or any curious mind to explore. The most important one would, of course, be the Say White. 47 kilometers east of the city of Abanque, and three hours ahead of the city of Cusco, and atop the Conca Cha Hill is the historical Say White monolith. The massive stone measures 2 meters in length and 4 meters in height, and is some hundreds of tons in weight. Interestingly, the monolith isn't a natural finding on the hill. This would mean that the massive monolith would have had to be carried to the top by close to a hundred people, at least. But how it got there is just one of the many mysteries here. The Sehuite has close to 200 zoological and geographical engravings and three-dimensional carvings on its upper surface. These carvings are so incredibly precise and specific that archaeologists have often debated the tools used to create them. The mystery doesn't end there either. According to famed historian and author, Dr. Arlen Andrews, the monolith represents a two-scale model of the Inca settlement, and the many water channels displayed in its design pay homage to the tribe's religious beliefs that were, in some way, connected to water. It looks like several generations of the tribe incorporated new channels in the Sehuit monolith to provide guidelines for engineers in the city. However, even the most recent one of these designs would have been from a couple more than a couple, actually, centuries ago. This isn't the only relic left behind by the ingenious Incas, either. Number 18. Intihuatana Long before the concept of the hour, minute, and seconds hand was designed for modern-day clocks, 
the Inca tribe and many others relied on the sun's position to guide them through the average workday. However, since the sun represented more work time, better crop yields, and was altogether considered a symbol of productivity, the Inca tribe wanted to find a way to keep it in its place. On top of the Machu Picchu in Peru lies an intriguing structure. The structure to most people would seem like nothing less than an unfinished project. The smooth structure resembles a bench or a short staircase with a protruding rock at the very top. This rock was what the Inca tribe hoped to use to hitch the sun in its place. Some researchers believe that the Inca tribe was so intrigued by the equinox, the time period where the sun stays in one place over the equator for an entire day, that they hoped to mimic that with a structure of their own. Others claim that the structure was nothing more than a rudimentary clock that cast shadows corresponding to the time of day. What's actually more interesting than the purpose of the Intihuatana is the origin. So far, the consensus was that the Inca tribe fashioned the structure during their day. However, the lack of any indication that tools of any sort were used hinted toward another possibility. Now, historians believe that the Intihuatana was built before the Inca civilization. Spanish travelers from the 14th century claimed that the structures had been built by the Viracocha gods. These gods held immense power and turned many large stone creatures into giants. However, after the giants started acting arrogantly, Viracocha decided to turn them back into stone. The Intihuatana is, therefore, believed by many locals as a realm of sorts to another dimension. In fact, almost every tourist has putting forehead against the Intihuatana on their itinerary. Why? Well, that's because many religious men in the region claim that particularly sensitive and pious people would be able to connect to the spirits and afterlife by closing their eyes and pressing their foreheads against the structure. So far, unsurprisingly, no reports of spiritual awakening have been made. Number 17. Ishi no Hoden. Located on the grounds of Oshiko Jinja, a Shinto shrine in the city of Takasago, Hyogo Prefecture, in the Kansai region of Japan, stands the next mysterious megalith in this list. At first glance, tourists would assume that the rock structure carefully carved out to make it seem like it's floating on water was an afterthought to the temple. Probably a decorative element. The truth is, the shrine was the afterthought. The stone stands at almost 5 meters in height, 6 meters in length, and 7 meters deep with a weight of approximately 500 tons. The origin of this structure remains unknown. Ishino Hoden appears as two rectangular structures, sandwiching a smaller rectangle in between, with a pyramid-like protrusion from one of the edges. What's interesting about this structure, besides its sheer size, is the fact that it's surrounded by unprocessed bedrock, and you'd assume it was floating on water because of the pond it stands on. However, the monolith has a smaller and slenderer base below that's been very intricately concealed. While the Ishi no Hoden holds religious significance in today's times, with many believing that it's a relic from the gods or far-off civilizations and their vehicle to travel across dimensions, some historians argue that it is, in fact, an unfinished shrine in itself. Of course, we don't know the truth behind the structure, or many others just like it, right off the bat. Another interesting theory proposed by some tourists was that the Ishi no Hoden was an abandoned spacecraft that became embedded in tough as centuries went by. At this point, any explanation for these megaliths would work. Number 16. Al Nas La. The world's changed in many, many ways since the 19th century. Advancements in medicine, automobiles, laws, and a whole lot of other things. However, the one thing that stayed consistent from then till this day is the perplexing mystery of the Al Nas La rock formation. At this point, finding engravings and carvings on megaliths might not seem like a surprise, no matter how intricate they might be. Likewise, the structural formation of it might still be confusing, but many people have just come to accept them as a common trait for megaliths. So, what's so different about the Al Nas La rock formation? The landform lies some 50 kilometers south of Tayama Oasis in Saudi Arabia. It was discovered in 1833 as two large standstones resting above naturally formed pedestals. The formation of the pedestals is easy to explain. 
Centuries of wind erosion probably tethered away at the surface of the Al Nasla formation and formed the otherwise natural looking bases. However, what remains a mystery is the precision cut line at the very center of the formation. The line is, in fact, so incredibly clean cut that many believed it was a clear sign of alien existence. Even modern day devices would not be able to clearly cut through the sandstones in this manner. Of course, some historians and researchers tried to rationalize the joint formation by claiming that it was because of a natural occurrence over the course of the past hundreds of centuries. The fact is, the al Nasla formation is a remnant of the earliest civilizations in history dating back to the 6th century. The megalith also features engravings that many believe were left behind by settlers around the Tayama oasis. At present, Archaeologists are trying to unravel the mystery behind the Al Nasla formation as quickly as they can because who knows how much longer these 500 ton rocks can stand on those tiny pedestals. Number 15. Takht e Rostam. Before the advent of Islam, Afghanistan was considered one of the world's leading Buddhist sites. Today, while most of those sites have been damaged due to years of neglect, the Takhti Rostam stands tall and proud as one of the most well-preserved relics of ancient Buddhism in the world. The term tall and proud in this case would be a pun because the actual structure is made entirely of underground bedrock. What's interesting here is that ancient civilizations, perhaps in the 3rd or 4th century, carved out five channels entirely underground with two of them leading to sanctuaries and one of them having an intricate lotus leaf pattern within. On top of the Takhti Rostam is the Harmika, an ancient building that holds relics of Buddha, while the megalith is named after the ancient Persian king, Rostam. Archaeologists believe that the site was actually created many, many years ago. The formation holds many similarities with the underground Buddhist temples found in Ethiopia. The only question is, why was it built underground? Your guess is as good as anyone's. Number 14. Maya Steli. The Mayan civilization truly left its mark on the world, predominantly through its intricate altar-like structures that feature rock formations with delicate carvings and hieroglyphics. What's even more interesting here is that stonemasons from the Mayan times did not have steel tools to work with. Their work is done almost entirely by sharpened stone, gravel, or simply with their hands. The oldest Maya stelae was found in the great city of Tikal in Guatemala. These limestone formations feature intricate details of kingship and religion and serve as to scale models of towns and cities. Mostly, these rock structures depict Mayan times under their current rulers. In some cases, the patterns showcase kings marching through cities surrounded by zoological engravings and backed by religious figures. While the Mayan civilization has been extensively studied, partly thanks to the hieroglyphics found on these stelae, their purpose is still unclear. Many believe that they were relics left by kings to glorify themselves. Others claim they were ceremonial sites. Some even suggested that the stelae were where Mayans partook in human sacrifice. Hundreds of these structures can be found throughout South America in their well-preserved state even to this day. Number 13. Pumap Un Ku Literally translating to Gate of the Puma, the Pumap Unku is a T-shaped, man-made, terraced platform mound with a sunken court located in western Bolivia. While much of the stone formation is in ruin today, you can still see the intricacies of the ancient Inca civilization. However, historians believe that Pumap Unku could possibly predate the Inca civilization. This is based on the fact that the Inca tribes believed the location was the site where the world was first created. Pumap Unku features a series of connecting gates with at least eight major gates, as well as several miniature ones. What's even more interesting, however, is the method used to keep these abnormally large stone structures together. Ancient engineering truly was well ahead of its time because archaeologists uncovered a series of precision cuts and flush joints holding the stone structures together like they were pieces of the same puzzle. Whether the Pumap Unku truly was the site for the creation of the world remains a debate because of the many other mysteries surrounding its existence. Number 12. Olante Tambo. 
72 kilometers west of Cusco in Peru lies yet another archaeological relic left behind by the Inca civilization. Olente Tambo was established by the Inca ruler Pachacuti, whose aim was for the town to serve as a ceremonial center in the region. Years later, during the Spanish Inquisition, Olente Tambo served as the principal location for Inca resistance under Manco Inca Yapanqui. The carefully planned out megalith often serves as a gateway of sorts to many of Peru's historical sites, including the Machu Picchu. The gateway is, however, in itself another work of wonder. The most interesting bit here is that the rocks seem to have been either cut or curated for one another. The way they fit in an almost puzzle-like state, making sure that not even a strand of hair passes through has confused researchers for decades. Number 11. Gobekli Tepe Often regarded as the world's oldest megalith, Gobekli Tepe was first discovered by German archaeologist Klaus Schmidt. Schmidt would then spend the rest of his life trying to understand the mystery behind this stone structure, but had little to no information about how it was formed and who built it. The best he could tell the world was that it was probably the site for the world's first temple, although that fact stands debated. Another interesting thing about this archaeological site is that it predates the most famous megalith, Stonehenge. The stone formation features many engravings, most of which suggest that this archaeological site might have been the world's first area of human settlement. The imagery shows hunter-gatherers from the Neolithic era. Others, however, argue that the site might not have been a human settlement, but maybe the earliest place of worship, which would prove Klaus's theory. The area features T-shaped monuments as well as circular excavations. Many archaeologists also argue whether the structure was man-made. Some claim that hunter-gatherers were not known for traveling in larger packs and could not form the entire structure by themselves. Maybe it was built over several generations, maybe nature played its part, or maybe aliens lent a hand here. Number 10. Dolmen of Menga. Found in Malaga, Spain, the Dolmen of Menga is believed to have been the world's most ancient burial ground. It consists of 12 stone structures, with the largest weighing approximately 200 tons. The Dolmen of Menga is a long barrow with channels running through it, leading to a deep well at the chamber's bottom. This well also features star and cross engravings, which further led archaeologists to believe that the site was considered holy by ancient settlers. Initially, Many believed that the megalithic structure was built within the hillside. They now know that the structure was built first, and then soil was collected along the sides atop the structure to make it appear like a hill. Considering the fact that structure is considered the oldest megalithic structure in all of Europe, that's an amazing feat for ancient civilizations. Number 9. Temples of Malta The earliest of Malta's megalithic temples is found in Valletta, where stone slabs have precision-cut circular holes that probably housed oracle stones before they were looted. The temples of Malta were popular many, many centuries ago, and the way the stone slabs are fashioned showcase that the religious prophet would stand at an altar and the worshippers would be separated from them by stone walls. The prophet would then, in all likelihood, bless the oracles or deliver a prophecy, indicating that more temples had to be built. The carvings might not be the most intricate ones seen in the long list of megalithic wonders, but the rudimentary art shows that even some of the earliest civilizations had tried to establish communication with one another through iconography. Folklore actually suggests that the temples of Malta were gifted to humans by the gods. Based on the fact that the wheel was created many centuries later, ramps were non-existent, and it would have been difficult to collect such a large group of people the theory of God's lending a hand actually holds some weight to it. Number 8. Newgrange In the Irish county of Meath lies an incredibly beautiful megalithic passageway believed to have been constructed sometime around 3200 BCE. This would mean that Ireland's Newgrange is older than Egypt's Great Pyramids. It consists of a massive round mound with stone tunnels and chambers making up the inside. Many of the larger stone structures are covered by hieroglyphic imagery and iconography. Archaeologists also manage to unearth human and animal remains, as well as other relics of ancient society within Newgrange, leading them to believe that the Irish historical site might have been one of the world's oldest religious centers. Number 7. Stonehenge 
Arguably one of the most popular tourist destinations of the world, and the imagery most synonymous with the term megalithic structure, England's Stonehenge stands in a league of its own, not just because of its phenomenal marketing, but also because of its historical importance. The prehistoric monument stands tall and proud on Salisbury Plain in Wiltshire, some two miles west of Amesbury. It consists of an outer ring of sorts of vertical stone structures, each measuring approximately 13 feet in height. The vertical pillars support a horizontal lintel stone. Inside the ring are freestanding trilithon structures. Historians believe that the structure was constructed as either a burial ground or an astronomical observatory. Possibly both. You'd think that the most puzzling aspect of Stonehenge was how ancient builders managed to place the horizontal stone structures atop the vertical ones, with each of them weighing approximately 40 tons. But no, the more perplexing situation here is, where did the blue stones in the center come from? While the lintels are local to the Wiltshire area, it appears that the stones within the circle would have had to be transported from some 400 kilometers away. Based on the fact that ancient civilizations had no access to heavy machinery, even the wheel wasn't invented around this time. Historians are still wondering how they managed to transport such massive stones from that far away. Number 6. Dolmens of Marayur, locally referred to as Muniyara, which translates to Refuge of Sadhus. The Marayur Munar Dolmens can be found in Kerala, India. These ancient structures have been the subject of archaeological investigations for many, many years. Most would agree that their origins are from the Stone Era. There is also a prevailing theory that suggests these dolmens might have served as tombs, created even further back. Most of these dolmens consist of four stone slabs, with three forming the sides and the fourth serving as the roof. It's believed that corpses would be covered in leaves, and placed at the center of the structure where they'd enter their final phase and descend above. The holes on the stone slabs indicate that ancient civilizations thought they'd serve as passageways for souls to travel within the dolmens. Numerous dolmens are scattered across the vicinity of the old Shiva shrine at Koval Kadavu, situated on the banks of the river Pambar. Additionally, there are captivating rock art sites on the southwestern slopes of the hill opposite the river which have attracted numerous visitors throughout the years. Now it's time for today's subscriber's pick, the Inca Civilization Temple Grounds. We owe many of the megalithic wonders present in the world today to the ancient Inca civilization in South America, who prided themselves on creating intricate stonework with what many believe are simplistic tools, sharpened stone in many cases. Temple grounds around Peru, where many believe the Inca civilization settled for a larger part of their existence, feature massive boulders apparently stacked on top of one another in a way that despite centuries worth of climate and natural disasters, the boulders have stayed in place. What's even more fascinating in this case is that the boulders weigh approximately 200 tons and are stacked on top of one another in a way that defies logic. How did ancient civilizations build these structures without the help of ramps and modern-day heavy machinery? This does suggest, though, that maybe the Inca civilizations had in fact perfected ancient engineering to a considerable extent. Many historians believe that pulleys and ramps could have been created out of trial and error within that time period. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Number 5. Rujum El Hiri Located in the Israeli-occupied portion of the Golan Heights, Rujum El Hiri, literally translated to Stone Heap of the Wild Cat, is a megalithic structure that's composed of stone slabs arranged in concentric rings with a tumulus at its center that stands at 15 feet tall. Approximately 42,000 stones are said to have been used to form the perfectly spaced rings. The height of the circles gets smaller and smaller from outside to inside, and the tumulus center consists of an access way which many believe was used as a burial ground. The circles are, in fact, incomplete. The outer circle is a semicircle. The second one is almost complete, and only the innermost circle is bounded at all sides. The debate on what the site was used for is still ongoing. However, many believe that the region was a site for human sacrifices. Number 4. Great Dolmen of Zambujero. The Great Dolmen of Zambujero is an awe-inspiring megalithic monument located in the Alentejo region of Portugal. This dolmen, 
also known as the Anta Grande do Zambujero, is one of the largest megalithic structures in Europe. It stands as a testament to the architectural and engineering prowess of the Neolithic people who built it around 4000 BCE. It is composed of enormous granite stones, some of which weigh several tons, forming a massive chamber covered by a colossal capstone. The entire structure is oriented in a north-south direction, with the entrance facing east, likely to have astronomical significance. The purpose of the Great Dolmen of Zambujairo remains a subject of debate among archaeologists and historians. Some believe it served as a burial chamber or a religious site, while others propose it had astronomical or calendrical functions. Regardless of its original purpose, it continues to captivate and intrigue visitors, offering a glimpse into the remarkable achievements of ancient civilizations and their connection to the cosmos. It stands as a testament to the enduring mysteries of prehistoric Europe and the enduring legacy of its builders. Number 3. Castle Rigstone Circle The Castle Rigstone Circle is a prehistoric monument located in the Lake District National Park in Cumbria, England. This Neolithic stone circle is one of the oldest and most atmospheric in the British Isles. Comprising 38 closely spaced standing stones, Castle Rig Stone Circle forms an almost perfect circle with a diameter of about 30 meters. The stones vary in height, with some reaching up to 3 meters, and they are set against the stunning backdrop of the surrounding fields and mountains, creating a breathtaking and mystical atmosphere. The purpose of the site remains shrouded in mystery, but it is widely believed to have had both ceremonial and astronomical significance. Its alignment with key astronomical events, such as the summer and winter solstices, suggests it may have been used for ancient rituals or as a primitive calendar. Today, Castle Rigstone Circle continues to draw visitors and researchers alike who seek to unlock its ancient secrets and appreciate its enduring beauty, making it a cherished and enigmatic symbol of Britain's prehistoric heritage. Number 2. Gun Ung Padang Situated in West Java, Indonesia, Gun Ung Pad Eni is an archaeological site that has garnered significant attention and debate in recent years. At first glance, the ancient site appears to be a stepped pyramid-like structure with layers of stone terraces. Radiocarbon dating has revealed that some parts of this site date back to around 5000 BCE, making it potentially older than the pyramids of Giza and Stonehenge. The purpose and origin of Gun Ung Padang remain subjects of ongoing research and debate. Some experts believe it was a religious or ceremonial site, while others suggest it might have had astronomical significance. Gun Ung Padang's enigmatic nature has led to numerous theories and speculations about its history and function, sparking fascination and curiosity among archaeologists and the public alike. Number 1. Avebury. Situated in the county of Wiltshire, England, Avebury stands as one of the most captivating locations worldwide. It is renowned for its expansive stone circle, which encompasses a portion of the picturesque village of Avebury itself. This Neolithic monument's origins can be traced back to approximately 2500 BCE, predating its more famous neighbor, Stonehenge, which is located just a short distance away. The original Avebury stone circle comprised roughly a hundred stones, although many have either been removed or buried over time. Still, the site remains a striking spectacle, with the most massive stone weighing approximately 100 tons. While archaeologists continue to debate its exact purpose, Avebury is believed to have held ceremonial, religious, or astronomical significance, with certain stones aligned to mark the solstices. Designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, Avebury occupies a special place in the hearts of those enthralled by ancient mysteries and the accomplishments of our distant forebears. It remains a realm of wonder and contemplation, beckoning individuals to forge a connection with the distant past and marvel at the ingenuity of the Neolithic builders. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.